Hey, folks, <laughs> this might look like a repeat, but let me tell you, it's day three of ice fishing. Uh, this is a record in itself. I just left the house. I got some minnows. Don't have to stop this time. Uh, I fished Scotch Run three days ago. Uh, well, no, two days ago. I fished Hopewell yesterday and put that on YouTube. And that was with a friend out there, uh, Rusty. Hope you watched it. And today, I'm going out to Blue Marsh, just like I said I was going to. Now, I've never been to Blue Marsh. I don't know where they ice fish from. I don't know what type of bait they use, but I've got to try it. I mean, there's only a month and a half, uh, two months down here in Reading, Pennsylvania, where you can actually ice fish. Now, we've hit it lucky this year. Uh, as you've seen by my previous ice fishing escapades, both Antietam, Scotch Run, and Hopewell, the ice has been eight and a half inches or more, uh, Antietam being the highest with 11 and a half. And I'm going out to Blue Marsh today. Now, Blue Marsh is a much, much bigger lake. Uh, just uh, if you've watched my hikes around Blue Marsh or, you know, the, the sections that I do, uh, you know that it's uh, 29 miles around the lake, 29.7 to be exact. And I will be hiking all of that section at a time. I'm still not up to doing 20 milers like Luke or, or them other guys out there. Real Big Monkey. Hey, I remembered your name this time. Uh, Kenny, I see you are more into building your cabin and I so like what you're doing there. I did one myself when I was younger. Uh, gave it up about 10 years ago when I, my son passed away. It was just too far from here to go enjoy myself for a weekend jaunt, and I was still working at the time. So I gave that up. Now I'm a little on the sad side that I did give it up. I should have just left it sit there. If it would have rotted away, I could have rebuilt. That would have given me something to do like Kenny's doing. So, Colrica and Lone Wolverine watch your videos all the time putting a shout out to all you guys so glad you're there makes me feel better I enjoy what's going on so we're now just starting to get a couple snow flurries here uh, tonight and tomorrow the weather looks to be extremely bad uh, they are saying 50 mile an hour winds here this evening and it's supposed to start right around 4 o'clock and they're not sure how much snow but we're supposed to get more snow again so we're keeping an eye on everything. Stopped at a light right now. There goes one of my buddies with uh, fireplace, fire police license plates on the front. So let me uh, shut you down for a minute, save my battery until I get out there to Blue Marsh, do some fishing, show you what that's like. I know, you all get bored watching me do that stuff, so. I hope you enjoy this one. It's going to be different. I might not even, might not be able to go fishing. I don't know, but I will stop out and talk to the rangers. All right, I'll be back. made it out here. The only place I found that anybody was even on the lake with a sled or ice fishing is right here. It's up toward the uh, upper end at the um, North Kill Creek area. But uh, I'm at the almost the top end of the lake. Uh, if you can zip on that picture right there, you see where the dam breast is down at the bottom right corner. 
I'm all the way up in the upper left corner of the lake where that little arrow is, the little red parking area. That's where I'm at. This is the only place I found where anybody's ice fished, so I decided to see what I can do. Now, I've scanned this whole lake from end to end with my binoculars. I have not seen one other guy on the lake, so it's a little shaky. I won't know how thick it is until I get out there and drill a hole. All right. Okay, I did it. Made it to the other side of the lake. Now, if you listen real good, oh, we just shut it off. They have a gas-powered auger. Uh, but what I found right here, drilling by hand, 11 and a half inches, 11 and three quarter inches of ice, almost 12 inches. Depends where you hook it underneath, but this close to shore has a bridge that goes over. And I swear, under that last pylon, it looks like plain water, clear water, but I don't think so. I think it's just because there's no snow on top of it. I'll walk over a little bit later and check it out. But uh, I might put one in next to a pylon up there. Uh, a lot of times they like to hang around there too. So we're going to see what happens. First one in, of course, my tip up. Ah, snap trap, excuse me. I'm going to see what happens. Next one's going to go real close to this tree where it's pointing out all this brush. See what happens. All right, I'm clear. Well, I'll tell you what. I use my electronic depth finder right there. It's a cheap one. Put it down in the holes. We're talking 15.4 feet right here. And the lake is down, as you can see by the shore right there, where the edge of those trees are. That's undercut by where the water usually is. There's your tree line. You can see the water line all along the bank, right at the edge of the rocks there. And if it's 15 foot where I'm standing, you've got to add that extra five foot from how far down this lake is. So you're talking a good 20, maybe 30 feet, because I'm off the side. We're not even talking about the middle of this lake. But uh, I tell you what, this thing does get down there to 53 foot like they said it does. 53 to 56 foot down at the dam breast. And again, that was on one of my previous ones. I tell you one other thing. This cold sure does zap batteries really fast. I'm still on my first battery. I'm getting ready to hook up to the second one. Uh, those two guys are out there. They're fishing. I don't know. They had their auger running there for a couple of minutes. It sounded like they only got about three holes dug. But, well, I've got my three dug by hand. And I tell you, by hand, you get a lot more exercise than you do holding an auger up and down. Plus, the weight of the auger, you got to drag it out in the ice. Now, you get up to the Poconos where you might have two foot ice or 16 inches of ice compared to 10 like we have here or 12 and yeah you could be drilling forever and they even put extensions on their augers to get down through the ice that to me is a little extreme i'm not so sure i'd ever, ever try or do that but uh see how far we are away from the vehicles in the parking lot all right well it looks like i'm going to change battery here i'm getting flashed at all right, by the way, I did order two more higher capacity batteries. I have uh, uh, 1,080 in here right now, and I'm going to 1,850 milliamp hour. So we're going to see if that helps in the cold. I know it sure will in the summertime. We're talking almost a double-sized battery compared to what I'm using now. All right, shutting you off for a little bit. Well, got to call it quits. We're going 1, 1 o'clock in the afternoon, and... Uh, haven't had a bite yet. I tried to do the lunchtime thing like I did uh, the other day. No bites. We're having a lot of expanding ice, but it's time to wrap up and leave. So that's about it. I'm going to wrap all these rods up right here and take them in and I'll walk you back to the truck. That's it for today. Oops. Here we go, guys. Wrapping it up. Pulling the sled behind me. As long as the minnows don't fall off, I'm okay. Sorry about all the movement. Walking back to the truck. Cold day out here again. It's supposed to get worse. We'll see what's going to happen. All right, got to keep an eye on the minnows.
Well, that's it for today. I'm done. Back at the truck. Get undone. Put my stuff away. It's beautiful walking out there, but when coming back, whoo! I didn't go very far. Uh, I'm gonna see what I did here. Uh, wow, not very far at all. A little hard to see out here in this in this gray sun, gray, gray skies. But I'll tell you, it wears you out in this cold. It takes a lot out of you. Be very careful out there. I guess I was kind of lucky today in that the ice was that thick. Uh, I've never seen it 12 inches thick out here at Blue Marsh. Uh, at at six inches thick, we lost a guy out here who was uh, tending to his traps. He walked across the lake like I just did, well, across one of the fingers like I just did, and went through, and they didn't find him for about six days. He was under the ice. He hit a spot where the water was actually flowing under the ice, and he didn't know it. Near the edges where he was trapping, yeah, it was thick. It was, it was uh, 10 to 12 inches thick, but where we, he went through, they said it was less than six. Now, uh, of course, Everybody puts out that four inches is safe for a 200 pound man. I got to be careful. I'm right at 220 plus all my gear takes it up another 50 or 60 pounds. So I'm just telling everybody out there, please, please, please be very, very careful on the ice. I enjoy it. This might be the last time I'm going this year. Depends what this storm tonight and tomorrow does. So, yep, up here in Reading, Pennsylvania, we're due for a good one, they said. 50, 60 mile an hour winds. Uh, somewhere locally they had put out there's supposed to be 70 mile an hour winds that might be up in the mountains so again enjoy my battery's about shot stay strong patient and trust your journey thank you everybody all right I don't know how much time I got left on that thing but uh, as you can see I'm in the truck it might fall over for me I don't know I don't have it pinned in there real good but uh, Oh, this is fun. All right, got to go to four-wheel drive now. There we go, four-wheel drive. Get us right out of here. We're in a pretty bad area. I got my other cap. That was cute. <laughs> it spun, collapsed all at the same time. So let's get this thing tightened up. There we go. All right. It uh, spun and collapsed at the same time. So, wow. If I didn't have four wheel drive, that would have been it. I would have had to wait for help. Again, it fell. So, we're not gonna talk anymore. I'm not gonna fight with a camera. And uh, I will find a way to get this thing mounted in here somehow so I can talk to you guys. But that's it for now. I'm done. All right, I don't know how much time I got left on that thing, but uh, as you can see, I'm in the truck. It might fall over for me. I don't know. I don't have it pinned in there real good, but uh, oh, this is fun. All right, got to go to four-wheel drive now. There we go, four-wheel drive. Get us right out of here. We're in a pretty... If I didn't have four-wheel drive... That would have been it. I would have had to wait for help. Again, it fell. So, we're not going to talk anymore. I'm not going to fight with a camera. And uh, I will find a way to get this thing mounted in here somehow so I can talk to you guys. But that's it for now. I'm done.